Uh, let's start the Q&A section. May I uh, first invite uh, Professor Chen from uh, CTU to ask your question, please. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairman, for like, this open session. So I would like to... Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Sorry? Can... Yes, yes. Uh, okay. So, uh, the, uh, so you just mentioned, uh, uh, you know, for the a role as a PC for CRF at least one of CRF. That means um, if uh, somebody that has submitted a CRF preliminary proposal in, I mean, uh, a few months ago, that means that they cannot act as a PC for this one of CRF proposal. Is that correct? No, I, I was just co uh, corrected by the secretariat in the letter. No, right. It's actually to, not the case, right? In the letter that was sent to uh, university presidents. Uh, for the CRF, uh, you can submit as a uh, project coordinator to the normal CRF uh, scheme as well as uh, to this scheme. But you can only submit one project, at most one project, under each scheme. For the TRS, uh, you can only submit one project under the normal TRS uh, or to this COVID-19 related scheme. Okay. Following that, so so now I think the the shortlist for CRF, you know, for interview has been known already. So that means um, uh, people who has know that they their their project TRS project hasn't been uh, shortlisted for interview, can they you know uh, pack it as a new TRS proposal for this one one of. The, the TRS uh, shortlisted for interview would happen in June. Uh, however, uh, this uh, you can, of course, uh, as long as you are not submitting uh, two projects under the same TRS scheme, you may submit one project under this, uh, uh, the last TRS, as well as a new project under next year's TRS. Uh, so that's the only requirement is that you cannot submit multiple projects under the same TRS scheme in the same year. Oh, the, the, apply to the same thing for TIS. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your answers. Yeah, yeah. I'll pass to other, you know, um, audience. Uh, would Professor Ku of BU please ask your question? All right. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for your comprehensive introduction of the funding scheme. Uh, my question is, uh, this pandemic is certainly is an international event, but also is uh, certainly uh, uh, related to many countries and with a lot of the research globally. So my question is, uh, is that international collaboration is encouraged? I understand the money cannot change hands, money cannot be sent abroad, but is that international consortium will help us to get the funding? Uh, yes. Uh Actually, the collaborative research scheme supports collaborations across the board, whether it is local universities, local academics, and international collaborators. So there are no restrictions as far as collaborators are concerned. Uh, the point that I mentioned earlier is that uh, money you uh, allocated for the CLF should normally be used in Hong Kong to support researchers in Hong Kong. In exceptional cases, you may subcontract a small part of the project to overseas ac uh, academics or, or, or collaborators as long as the research cannot be done in Hong Kong and you make a good uh, uh, case on why the part that is subcontracted has to be done overseas. So okay. uh, collaborators can, are all welcome across the board internationally. Okay, thank you very much. Would uh, Dr. M of LU please ask your question? Uh, hello, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for, for holding uh, this section. Uh, so my question is, uh, will a psychological research project with a physiological indicator of stress among employees uh, be considered? Thank you. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the, the scheme is open to all aspects of research supported uh, by the uh, RGC. Uh, the, the example that you mentioned, psychological indicators, uh, saliva tests be funded, 
Uh, yes, as long as it satisfies the, the criteria on the review, and as long as it is a valid research project. I'd like to point to you the, the, uh, the, uh, in terms of the review uh, criteria, me meaning that the projects, what kind of projects would be supported, and how would the projects be uh, reviewed. Now, the, the pro we are looking at primarily at the academic quality of the research. Uh, namely that this will be the uh, most important driving factor uh, in reviewing a proposal. Each proposal will be reviewed similarly to the normal CLF projects, that is we would have uh, international panel members, uh, uh, international reviewers, as well as local reviewers in reviewing the proposal. Uh, there will be, uh, the, the only difference for this CLF round is that there would not be a pre-proposal stage uh, there is only a registration stage that you have to complete by June 12th, uh, but the full proposals are due uh, sometime in July. Uh, once the full proposals have been submitted, it will be sent out for full review, and if the project is shortlisted, then they will be uh, scheduled for interview uh, sometime in December, in the first week of December. Uh, if the project uh, are deemed successful and meets the quality standard, then they will be funded, and the money would uh, be available in January. Uh, the maximum delay that you can start the project must be June 2021. Uh, so the, the project, as, as uh, what the example that you mentioned, uh, can all be supported. Now, another question that uh, was raised by uh, the different universities is that whether we are going to ring fence money for certain aspects of the of the uh, uh, of the project, uh, of the uh, various research areas. Now, we are not going to do that because, uh, the, as I mentioned earlier, that the prim primary uh, uh, review criteria would be the academic quality. Only when all conditions are equal, then we are going to look at certain aspects on the distribution. For example, like whether humanities would uh, be funded uh, if there are too few humanity pro humanities projects. Uh, and too many uh, projects related to medicine, Un when all the conditions are equal, uh, meaning that two projects have the same quality, uh, but there are less projects in humanities, then we may choose to fund humanities projects. Similarly, uh, also a question raised is that whether we are going to ring fence the money for certain universities, one university would get uh, uh, at least one or two projects. Again, that is not going to happen only when the projects are of equal quality, then we are going to look at the distribution of projects across the university. So this is the criteria, as I mentioned, that the uh, criteria that we will be using will be the academic quality. Another criteria that, uh, uh, we, uh, criterion that we will be using is that uh, we would give priority to projects related to COVID-19 and projects that can, can, can be completed earlier within the three years. That is, if, if uh, for example, if there are two projects of equal quality, one can be completed in one year, and the other one will be completed in three years, then priority will be given to the one that can be completed in one year. Uh, similarly, for COVID-19 and NID, uh, NID, if two projects of equal quality, then priority will be given to COVID-19. So that's, that's the, the, the way that we are going to prioritize the projects and the different areas. Okay. Thank you very much for your answer, Chairman. Okay. Would uh, Professor Fanny Zhang of CU please ask your question? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Ben, for answering no, some of our prelim no, previous questions. So I'd like to uh, focus more on the TRS. Uh, at the moment, there are no designated themes under TRS. So, uh, will COVID-19 and NID applicate the existing themes, or would there be a separate theme that would cover all different uh, disciplines? Because right now, you no, know, the existing themes seem to be uh, more designated. Now, the money that was allocated to this year's CLF is $146 million. This includes $50 million for equipment grant. Now, the new initiative is a one-off initiative. We have allocated $150 million for the new initiative. It is for projects 
related only to COVID-19 and NID. They are not going to be used for projects that are funded under the existing schemes. Now, you may ask, uh, like, what happened to projects that have been submitted uh, under the normal scheme and are related to COVID-19? We have actually identified four of those projects that are related to COVID-19, and they will be moved to the new scheme uh, to compete for the, for the new money available. Uh, another question that was raised is that whether existing project can ask for new money to, so that they can uh, augment the goals of existing projects. Uh, the, new, the money allocated, uh, the one-off money allocated today would not be used to augment existing projects. However, PIs of existing projects can submit uh, modifications to the existing project to the RGC for approval as long as it is on a cost-neutral basis. There's no increase in the money. Uh, if you want to have, if you want, if you want to study new aspects uh, that are not covered in your existing projects, you are welcome to submit a new proposal under the, this new scheme. Uh, uh, ben, I think you misunderstood my question. I, I was under uh, asking under TRS itself. There are now existing themes. So for the COVID nineteen applications, would that uh, would they be fitted? under the existing themes like health, mm -hmm. uh, Hong Kong economy and business, and so on and so forth, or would there be a separate theme uh, specifically for COVID-19 and NID? You're asking about TRS, right? Not, not yes. CRF. I no. heard it was CRF. Yeah. yeah, for TRS. TRS. Okay. For TRS, I think that we have four existing areas. Uh, mm -hmm. If I uh, want to, let me try to repeat those areas uh, here. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, four area, the four themes are promoting good health, uh, developing a sustainable environment, enhancing Hong Kong's strategic position as a regional and international business center, and also advancing and merging research and innovations important to Hong Kong. Now, the new money, $100 million, would, is, uh, is money that cut across those four areas. Namely, that you can look at the, the study of COVID-19 and the NID as something orthogonal to the four themes that we already have in the TRS. Namely, that there will be uh, COVID-19 and NID aspects related to promoting good health, uh, COVID-19 and, and NID related to developing a sustainable environment. Similarly, COVID-19 and NID related to theme three, and so on, and for theme four. So it is something orthogonal to the four themes that we already have uh, listed under the TRS. And does that mean that the applications will be evaluated under the different uh, theme panels then? That is correct. That is we, uh, the evaluation will be done under the existing uh, panels, but of course we are going to, uh, we may have to enlist new reviewers who are, who are qualified to review proposals related to COVID-19 and NID. Yeah, okay, thank you. Now uh, it's Ed Yu's turn. Uh, Professor Zhang, please. Yeah, good, thank you. Um, so other things being equal, um, do you prefer tangible products over pure research data as deliverable? Other things being equal. Thank you. Now, the RGC, the, uh, I think the, what, whatever we are supporting under the RGC uh, would be both basic research as well as applied research. Uh, there is no uh, 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 requirement uh, that there will be tangible products as long as they fall under the basic research or the applied research. The uh, a tangible outcome or product could be a, a result coming out from this research. However, it is not a requirement uh, for proposals under the CRF as well as under the TRS. Thank you. Uh, would Professor Sum of PolyU uh, please ask your question? Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman. Uh, my question relates to the assessment of the proposals. 
I uh, just want to know whether the proposals will be assessed uh, by different panels, and if so, how many panels will be there? Now, I think that uh, the, the diff there are, we already have set up uh, panels under the major project steering committee for both the CRF and the TRS. Uh, we would be enlisting the panels to look at the individual proposals and to decide whether the individual panels can review the proposals. Uh, the, the way that we are going to do it is that uh, it, when the proposals come in, uh, say they are related to COVID-19, but it is related to the business area, mm -hmm. then we are going to send it to the business panel uh, under the major project steering committee to decide whether they can look at uh, the, the review or they can review the proposal. Now, it, it may happen that that particular proposal may be cross-disciplinary, meaning mm -hmm. that there are aspects related to medicine, humanities, as well as business, then uh, the individual panel chairs would work together to find the qualified reviewers to review this proposal. Uh, so you should not be uh, the, the concern that uh, we are only, uh, we would only allow each proposal to be reviewed by one panel and reviewers under that panel. We are going to look at cross-disciplinary research and to enlist the uh, right reviewers and the appro appropriate qualified reviewers to review individual proposals. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Would uh, Professor Chen of uh, UST please ask your question? Thank you, Chairman. So my question is that for the composition research team, what would be the requirement for the co and collaborator? So um, co and collaborator from local UGC funding institutions or overseas be considered. And I would also would like to know RGC's perspective when uh, there is uh, no uh, uh, copy or collaborator from local UGC, but there are quite a few from overseas. There are no restrictions. I think your question is concerning the uh, uh, the, co, uh, the co I, right, or the co PI. Yes. Which one are you looking at? Okay, uh, the co COIs and collaborators. Co-eyes co and collaborators. Okay, for co-eyes and collaborators, there are actually no requirements whether they are from local universities or overseas universities. Uh, they can be from anywhere, internationally or local universities. Uh, the only requirement we mentioned earlier is that uh, the budget allocated to the project should mostly be spent in Hong Kong, meaning that uh, if you have a, a co-ey uh, in, in uh, the uh, US or in the UK, uh, you may invite them to come to Hong Kong and do the research and support them locally to do the research, uh, but it may uh, you would require special approval if you need to send the money over to the U.S. or the U.K. to ask the COI to work on the research. Uh, so that's, that's the only requirement is that special approvals will be needed on a case-by-case -case basis if the COI is not located locally. Okay, thank you very much. Um, may I ask uh, Professor Lee of Hong Kong U to raise your question, please? Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you for org organizing this event. And you can see there are already more than 40 of us uh, in front of you. And this means that at least you're probably expecting uh, 40 proposals. So there will be a lot of proposals than usual one because there's no short listing. And there are two related questions related to assessment. Number one is, some colleagues uh, here in Hong Kong U uh, felt that uh, maybe they have the proposal with uh, sensitive ideas and issues, and, and whether uh, uh, the, uh, the review will be conducted normally or, or if, if, the PI, if the PC could uh, 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 propose to have the uh, review done locally. Number two is I, I we wonder I'm sorry, you're, whether you're, I our local your health organizations well. like the CHP would be involved in commenting the proposals. I, I cannot hear your questions very well. You are breaking out. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Okay. So uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so the number one is uh, um, whether for uh, some proposals and the PI might have sensitive ideas and, and the issues related to uh, COVID-19 whether those proposals could be requested to be reviewed locally. Number two, whether there will be any input from local health authorities, such as CHP. Now, we require that the projects, we would 
uh, make sure that the idea submitted are all done on a treated on a confidential basis. There are uh, staff, there is staff at the secretariat that will handle the proposals, but due care will be taken to ensure that all the ideas uh, will be treated confidentially. However, the requirement is that the project must be eventually in the open domain. You cannot submit confidential ideas and require that the proposals be treated confidentially and not open to the public. So this is uh, one requirement that, 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 that must be the case. Secondly, uh, when you say uh, a project must be uh, reviewed by local reviewers or by non-local reviewers, uh, you can make requests to say that certain reviewers can be excluded, meaning that you do not like the reviewers to be from local universities, uh, your ideas uh, ca cannot be reviewed by local university. I, I think that uh, is something that you can raise in your proposal. Uh, however, we are going to send the proposal out to reviewers that uh, are not listed in your, in your proposal. Uh, however, you cannot list a thousand people in your proposal and say we cannot send to a thousand people. That may be overdoing it. Thank you. Uh, let's start the second round of questions. Would uh, Dr. Su of CTU please ask your question? Uh, hello, uh, Chairman. So this is a change from CTU. Uh, I have one question and one comment. The first question is, uh, I understand uh, this grant is coordinated efforts of Hong Kong based to target these uh, COVID-19 issues. But I'm wondering, as an engineer, who cares about, about the the generated IPs. Let's say I'm designing a device, but I've utilized IP generated from Hong Kong U. It's going to be a, you know, a team efforts to help us coordinate the IP generated from this program. Uh, let me try to answer your question. Uh, you said whether uh, IP issues will be uh, treated, uh, we, do we coordinate IPs from Hong Kong U together with CDU in, doing the, in funding the research? Is that your question? Uh, yes, a example, let's say, I'll give you one example, for example, right, we know uh, Professor Chen from Hong Kong U generating a vaccine candidate for the COVID-19, but now, uh, let's say I'm designing a device for this, for delivery of vaccine for the patient, however, I'm not working with Professor Chen, uh, but I have to utilize these vaccines, obviously, they're going to be a conflict with the IP, right, so okay. will there be any coordination of it, you know, but the coordination is not, Hong Kong. is not our responsibility, meaning that I we see. are a funding agency. If you submit a proposal, you must secure all the IP releases or the agreements with Hong Kong U before you submit the proposal. Uh, meaning, meaning that if you do not have the IP but you develop something and eventually Hong Kong U, uh, as an example, rejects uh, your request to use the IP, then you are in limbo at that point because you, we, even if we fund you the research, you cannot conduct the research. So before you submit the proposal, you must work with all the related parties to ensure that you can use the IP and to document that release in the proposal when you submit the proposal. So it would be your responsibility to do that, not our responsibility. I see. Okay. Uh, I have another comment, uh, which is, uh, I mean, I understand from the chairman, so the review process will take half a year, and then they're going to be defense in December. Uh, but I feel it's too long, you know, because let's say I'm waiting for the grant to start the project, but it will take at least six months for me to get the money. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can speed up this process, uh, you know, so we can the, get the money SAP okay. to the get The process the has already been sped up uh, substantially, because normally, the cycle for the uh, CLF is one year. You submit a proposal, a pre-proposal in February or March. We review the pre-proposal in June, and then final interviews will be done in, in uh, December. We are already short-circuiting the process by not having the pre-proposal stage. Uh, so it means that you are going to submit the full proposals by July. Now, we understand that it takes a long time to develop a full proposal and you have to decide whether you want to submit a, free, a full proposal by that time because uh, uh, at the end, it would take us some time to review the proposal. 
uh, it has to be done by panels. The quality standard on uh, proposals funded by, uh, by the RGC must be maintained. So uh, I understand your concern that that uh, you uh, indicated that you want to do your research immediately, but the normal process of all RTC grants takes about one year. And, and for this new uh, uh, initiative, we are short-circuiting that to only six months. Yeah, I understand. That's why I said it's, this is a comment, not a question. All right, thank you. Would Professor Poon of BU uh, please ask your question? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I really appreciate the comment you made earlier about you know, um, LGC embraces all discipline uh, uh, in terms of research uh, for particularly this particular provision of research grant. Uh, I would like to follow up on um, the issue about uh, creative art or creative media. Um, uh, so would RGC or the panel uh, consider expanding the definition of research output to accommodate, you know, research projects such as uh, uh, practice-led artistic research or what we call non-traditional research, which is something, you know, widely accepted by the RAE assessment. So, uh, but, you know, uh, currently the TRS scheme, you know, um, um, research is still quite narrowly defined as a research output, a publication, journal, and research findings. So I, I would like to ask if uh, or whether you would consider at the same time uh, um, you know, expand the scope of the definition of research output in this regard. Okay, I, I'd like to clarify your definition of research output. It is different from the uh, our definition of research output. Uh, you stated that uh, the definition of research output has been stated very narrowly to include journal papers and conference papers and so on. I, I think that is probably your perception of research output. Our perception of research output is that anything coming out from a research project, whether it is a basic research or applied research, can be considered as uh, research output, whether it is traditional research outputs or non-traditional research outputs. The proposals uh, being reviewed can uh, have both or have only one aspect and it will be reviewed according to the normal practice by finding the correct reviewers to look at the research projects. So I think that you should treat the research output as uh, in the broad sense, any project supported under the RTC would coincide with the research outputs under the research assessment exercise. Glad to hear that. Thank you very much. Would Dr. M of LU please ask your question? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my question is uh, for the TRS, uh, how many subprojects should be included? You, you're asking about a TRS, right? Yeah, yeah, TRS. There is no requirement on the number of subprojects. It's up to the individual project coordinator uh, to decide with his team or his or her team. Uh, there is no prescribed number, uh, whether in the normal TLS uh, scheme or under the scheme in, in this uh, special initiative. So it, will, it depends on the, on the project. Some may require only, uh, there will be no sub-projects, but other may re others may require 10 sub-projects. So we cannot generalize and tell you a number because it, it differs across the board for different areas. Hey, thank you very much, Chairman. Is the turn for CU, uh, Professor Benny T. Pierce. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. I have heard that uh, the assessment criteria uh, for the uh, collaborative research fund are based on academic quality and the focus in COVID-19 and how early it is uh, able to complete. Uh, since collaborative research fund traditionally require some, uh, in terms, especially those translational parts, require some uh, collaborators. Uh, would having an industry partners or hospitals or other NGOs as a collaborator have any advantage in this uh, assessment? And for a particular uh, requirement, would uh, internal partners like within the university with two different departments eligible for applying for, uh, uh, I know collaborative research fund is probably eligible, but uh, I, uh, TRS, I don't know whether it is eligible. 
Now again, that that is uh, the collaborators. Uh, the definition of collaborators is very project specific. Yeah, you can say that whether you require uh, hospital authority collaborators or NGOs. Uh, it really depends on the projects. Uh, there is no requirement for doing that. Uh, you can, uh, they may contribute in-kind support or monetary support to your projects. But ultimately, that uh, for whatever support that they are providing, uh, the money will be deducted off from the budget that you submit to the RGC. So meaning that you have a total budget supported for doing this project. Uh, there may be some money chipped in by uh, some NGOs and this money will be deducted off from the project. You will not get the same money again from the RGC uh, to do the same work. So uh, to answer your question that, uh, uh, that uh, collaborators can be from uh, within the university, across the universities, and you have to make a case uh, that if you have only collaborators from within the university, why is that there are no other collaborators in Hong Kong doing the similar work? And, and I think that, 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 is, that part is important because uh, we have seen examples on projects on different teams from different universities competing against each other. They are submitting uh, uh, similar ideas on, on projects to the TRS. And when they got interviewed, uh, the panels, panel members asked them, why don't you collaborate together? Why, why are you working individually to, to, uh, on projects that are uh, very similar but yet you cannot work together on, on, the same, on the same idea. So this is something that you have to prepare to answer in case your project is shortlisted for interviews. Thank you. As Ed Yu has no question for this round, uh, let's move on to Polly Yu, Professor Larry Chow Pierce. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, so in this round of uh, CLF applications, um, there are so many different disciplines. Um, my question is, will these proposals coming from different disciplines, will they be uh, assessed or vetted together? Um, for example, physical sciences, will they be vetted similarly as other, say, uh, uh, non-physical sciences or medicine uh, projects? Will they be vetted uh, differently? Thank you. The composition of the panel consists of members from different disciplines. Mm -hmm. And normally in the review panel uh, that we have panel mem members from different disciplines, uh, they, uh, when, when they interview uh, the shortlisted proposal, some of the non-experts uh, may be also sitting in the panel and listening to the ideas uh, presented. They may or may not make any comment related to the proposal. Uh, but the chairman of the, uh, the CRF and the TRS will take all the comments into consideration in making a recommendation uh, to the major project steering committee before making the recommendation to the RTC. Uh, so so uh, to answer your question, that, that is, there may be members in, from, uh, in the panel across different areas uh, sitting together in listening to the, to the presentation by the shortlisted team. Um, say, for example, if some of the, uh, say, biological uh, sciences uh, proposals, there are a lot of very high score uh, proposals. But on the other hand, there are not so many in, say, physical sciences uh, proposals. Would there be some kind of adjustments in terms of, sort of leveling the number of projects in each discipline? As I mentioned earlier in the opening remarks, that we do not ring fence projects in different areas. That is, uh, if you say we don't have enough projects in physical sciences, we are going to ring fence 10 projects for physical sciences. That is not going to happen. I mentioned earlier that the prim primary uh, criterion for reviewing the proposals would be the academic quality of the research. Only when two projects are equal in the academic quality then we are only look at we are going to look at the distribution across different areas, distribution across universities, and so on. So uh, the, the 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 secondary or tiebreaker would be, for example, the areas, uh, the distribution across universities, and so on. Thank you very much, Professor Wu of uh, UST, please. 
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. I, uh, my question uh, is related to uh, the uh, evaluation uh, criteria again, and, and I'm looking at from the uh, perspective of a uh, you know, proposal that will have a, a policy, uh, the impact on policy measure and the community solution. So those tend to have uh, you know, practical component there. So if you're looking at a potential impact of uh, these proposals, the impact can come from different areas. One is theoretical contribution, then practical contribution globally, and the practical contribution regionally, and then practical contribution locally, which means contribution directly to Hong Kong. So, so, I, so I guess in the idea, world, we would say that we want all of them. But since this is a, a special round uh, for the funding scheme here, how would this, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a priority and uh, emphasis on different kind of impact, would it uh, be different uh, from, from a normal round of uh, 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 of this uh, collaborative scheme or theme basically? I think the, the uh, if you recall that you have to include a uh, statement on impact in the CLF proposal. This means that like when you submit your proposal there is a, a, a paragraph describing the impact so it would be up to you to make a case whether it is regional impact, uh, international impact, global impact and so on. So the impact statement would be reviewed holistically together with the research quality uh, of the, of the, uh, uh, on the technical part. So the, at the end, everything would be taken together holistically. We are not going to separate out one aspect of a proposal and say that that is going to carry more weight uh, uh, because the, the review of the proposal is a holistic evaluation on every aspect in the proposal, including the technical part the management part, the impact part, and the budget part. So everything has to be considered holistically in making the review and the, and the recommendation. Okay, thank you. Professor Sun of Hong Kong U, please. Hey, and Chairman, I'm, I heard a lot of questions and I'm still wondering, would it be possible to speed up the review process in terms of the urgency of the COVID-19 related diseases? And six months, I understand you already speed up, and, but in terms of urgency and maybe potential competition, uh, it would be better if we can further speed up maybe three to four months to finish the review process. And of course, my, my second question would be, would it be possible to invite additional panel members within the area to help you to review and handle this um, uh, manuscript uh, proposal, sorry. Thank you. Now, actually, uh, the, the, uh, when you say speed up the process, because the proposals are due in July. So in, in the way that uh, when you speed up the proposal to uh, by July 18, 7 plus, plus 4 is November 18. We are making the interviews in early December, the first week of December. So it actually satisfies what you are asking for, meaning that namely uh, two weeks and four months. Uh, 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 so we are doing the best on what we can do according to, to uh, what you have requested. Secondly, whether it is possible to invite international panel members, we have to, the, the formation of the panel would have to wait until we have received all the proposals by July. Uh, we cannot. We, we don't want to set up the panels today because uh, we don't know the distribution of the proposals submitted, and whether they are uh, all in in uh, social sciences or whether they are all in physical sciences or medicine. We have no idea on the distribution and the number of proposals that would come in in July. So, after we have received all the full proposals in July, we the, the panel chairs are going to look at the distribution and then decide on the proper number of panel members to invite at that point. So those panel members would then be uh, uh, invited. It would take about like a month for them to, to agree to serve on the panel, and then the review process would complete. Uh, you have to understand that when we send the proposal out to international reviewers, normally we give them something like a month. And barring the fact that some of them may reject, so the best case we can do a, a, a male review is uh, something like two months. So four months is actually the minimal time from the time of submission 
to the time when a decision can be made. Now, y your question is that why, why can't we do the review and, and finish the decision by November? The reason is that it, it's not going to help because the, the RTC meeting will be in December. We have to approve all the recommendations by the major project steering committee uh, by the RTC, which has been scheduled to meet in December. So the earliest time we can make the decision is in December this year.